Good day, everyone. Today we are going to be talking about a topic that is very, very important to us as a young nation. It's a topic that is, one could argue, our existential issue as such. You know? We are going to be talking about the Belize Guatemala issue, an issue in which there's a historic claim made by Guatemala on the territory part or total of Belize as such. So we will begin with a PowerPoint and a discussion of this issue. There is a current situation in the news constantly reminding us that we have a problem between as between Belize and Guatemala as neighbors, a territorial problem as such. Sure. And so one of the things one of the areas of confrontation is the Sarstoon area as such where there is a an uneasy relationship between the border of Belize and the people in the border of Belize and the Guatemala armed forces as such. Well. Southern border stress has resulted in a focus on operating bases um, of the military both on the Guatemalan side and the Belizean side as such. You know? And so Belize has seen itself needing to focus. The heightened military present both in the south and in the west has resulted in interactions, um, sometimes violently, um, sometimes military, between the Belize forces and citizens of Guatemala who come over for any given reasons, one such interaction resulted in the death of a 13-year-old, an immediate um, international incident in which the Guatemalan president accused the uh, Belize forces of um, killing a young Guatemalan. Information would later prove that, in fact, it was not by Belize defense forces that this that occurred. Nonetheless, this increased tension resulted in heightened Guatemalan military presence on the border, followed by a response by the Belizean Prime Minister uh, defending the actions of the Belize Defense Force and their innocence. This, of course, made sure that Belizeans felt comfortable with their troops in patrolling the border and calling for the patrolling of that border. This brings us to the need to understand what it is that is behind this Belize-Guatemala territorial claim. What is it that Guatemala bases their claim upon part or, or all the territories of Belize? As an antecedent to understanding the Belize-Guatemala territorial claim, it's interesting when you go back uh, over 1,600 years ago to the Maya in Maya civilization in this area and look at the the struggle for supremacy and of city states and the super city states as such and you realize that even back then as we as we look at the type of relationship that existed between Caracol, Tikal and Calakmul, you see the red lines between Caracol and Tikal denoting military aggression while between Caracol and Calakmul in the Mexican state, uh, lines, white lines denoting diplomatic relations. Furthermore, you see an architectural relationship between Caracol in Belize and Calakmul in Mexico. Very similar architectural um, relation as such. Uh, the architectural style between Caracol and Calakmul differ tremendously from that of Tikal. And you see there that there is a disconnect in the architectural styles and relationship that went on between these areas. Importantly, I want to add that the Battle of St. George's Key, while um, good for our emotional and national identity, did very little in changing the dynamics of the of of territorial sovereignty as such because the 1802-03 Treaty of Amiens and the British returned the territory back to Spanish sovereignty. It wasn't until 1821 when the Mexicans had declared their independence and fought for that independence from Spain 
that Central America also obtained that independence. So in 1821 was the end of the Spanish reign and the beginning of the Central American and Mexican Empire. As a result, there became the need for a, a English or British and a Guatemalan relationship because from that point in time, Guatemala began to insist and the first time it declared it was in 1839, that somehow they felt the territories that is now Belize was in fact territory that they were supposed to inherit. And so this constant claim and back and forth resulted in 1859, a treaty between Guatemala and the British, we refer to as 1859 Anglo-Guatemalan Treaty, a first attempt in history to settle the Guatemala territorial dispute as such. In that treaty, in Article 1, Article 1 clearly establishes the line of division between the Guatemalan territory and the British settlement as such. Right? It says beginning the, the, the line of demarcation begins at the mouth of the river Sarsun in the Bay of Honduras and proceeding up the mid-channel. And that's a very important term, the mid-channel. They are off to Gracias a Dios Falls, then turning to the right and continuing by a line drawn from Gracias a Dios Falls to Garbos Falls on the river Belize, and from Garbos Falls due north until it strikes the Mexican frontier as such. Articles 2 to 6 of that treaty are simply an affirmation of the need to establish the commissioners and the commission to go about demarcating that defined territory as such. Article 7, which was put in as an afterthought, becomes then one of the most problematic articles in this treaty as such. Because Article 7 tells us what the object of practically carrying out the views set forth in the preamble of the present convention, which is for improving and perpetuating the friendly relations which at present so happily exist between the two high contracting parties, they mutually agree conjointly to use their best efforts by taking adequate means for establishing the easiest communication, either by means of a cart road or employing the rivers or boat united according to the opinions of the surveying engineers between the fittest place on the Atlantic coast near the settlement of Belize and the capital of Guatemala on the Pacific coast as such. It's important that we bring attention to the fact that they mutually agree conjointly to use their best efforts as such. Unfortunately, for reasons in where Guatemala became involved in a civil war with El Salvador, the, the full demarcation was halted and it was never resumed again. This current map again showing off the Sarstoon and the mid-channel marker on the Sarstoon River as such. The next attempt to settle this dispute occurs between 1929 and 1933, and the reason for that was because of conflicts in the mid-1920s occurring between Guatemala and, and the British settlers, there was the exchange of diplomatic notes, and, and that ended with both the British ambassador and the Guatemalan ambassador agreeing that the demarcation of this needs to be resumed and needs to be resumed based on the 1859 demarcation activity as such. No? And so both territories appointed once again members of their commission with the British appointing James Wade, Fred Brunton and Arthur Wilson and Guatemala appointing Florentino Santiso and Fernando Cruz. This exercise was not completed having been terminated in 1933 because Guatemala decided not to continue, even though apart from those two terminal points, there were other pegs that were placed into the ground, uh, over 29 different pegs put on the ground between Gracias a Dios Falls and Garbut Falls. After the termination of that activity there, that attempt to settle the dispute, the second attempt to settle the dispute, we saw uh, in the 1940s, again, an attempt by Guatemala to, to, re, to, to lay its claim, a response by the British suggesting that it be take, taken to arbitration, a refusal by Guatemala, and in fact then Guatemala becomes a belligerent and threatens invasion as such. No? 
not only in 1948, but in subsequent years, 1972, 1975, and 1970. And so the third attempt to settle the Belize-Guatemala dispute had failed. And so a timeline was set for us to obtain our independence. It had to be before November of 1981. After that timeline was set, we made one more effort before independence to try to settle the dispute. So in, 19, in March of 1981, we again held a meeting in London between Belize, the United Kingdom, and Guatemala to try to resolve this dispute. That this attempted resolution was referred to as the Heads of Agreement as such. Attempt number four. In there, a list of points to be established for future negotiations was listed. Unfortunately, when this list was leaked to the Belizean public, who felt that these were heads of agreement already arrived at, there was violent reaction on the streets of Belize. And so Belize went into a state of emergency, and this, this attempt had to be halted and rejected as such. And so we went into independence on September 1981 without a resolution, a fourth failure to diplomatically resolve this issue. And so we went into independence with a military guarantee by the British. After our independence in 1981, nothing much was done because Guatemala was under military rule, and so by a military junta, and so we were um, not willing to negotiate with a military junta as such. You know? So it wasn't until after the elections of 1991, in which a civilian president was elected, Jorge Elias Serrano, that on his platform he, he had claimed that he was going to solve this dispute as such. And so negotiations were resumed between Belize and Guatemala after the election of Jorge Elias Serrano. So that becomes the fifth attempt to settle this dispute. It's important to note that at this point in history, we had come so very, very close because Jorge Elias Serrano had said, had made it clear that their, their, their problem with, with the territory is that it resulted in them not having maritime access to the Caribbean Sea as such. So between Belize, Guatemala, and Honduras, a maritime access was negotiated. Right? There was a, a, a zone, a lane, was created so that Guatemala would have free access from the Guatemalan ports in the south, straight through to the Caribbean Sea as such. No? That maritime lane would not be owned by Belize, it would not be owned by Guatemala, nor by Honduras, who had contributed maritime areas to this. It will be a, a, a joint between the three parties would have joint ownership of any resources or anything at that point in time. And so at that point, Guatemalan president recognized our independence and we established diplomatic relations. So for all intent and purpose, the dispute had been solved. On the fifth attempt, it had been solved. Unfortunately, in June of 1993, President Serrano is overthrown by his own military in Guatemala, and the Guatemalan military then appoints a new president who goes before their Congress and unrecognizes Belize's, uh, Belize's independence, unrecognizes the, 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 the negotiated agreement that had resulted in 1992, and so we were back to the very beginning. When that proposal was rejected, the OAS proposed to mediate, to serve as a, a middle, middle person to resolving diplomatic uh, relations, or at least to, to having diplomatic relations between Belize and Guatemala, negotiating this, this uh, international conflict, and, and trying to resolve it as such. But they also proposed that if they saw that it cannot be resolved, that they be allowed then to, pro to propose, to suggest that we resolve it by arbitration as such, right? And so after the rejection in August 2003 by Guatemala, we entered into a negotiation process between Belize Guatemala with the OAS um, guiding us along as such. At a certain point in time, it happened. By 2006, the OAS realized this was not going anywhere, 
because Guatemala insisted on territory and Belize was adamant no territory would be ceded as such. So we were at a, a, a zero-sum game. There was no way we were going to meet. And so the OAS then suspended the negotiations and submitted a proposal that it be settled through arbitration. The result of the OAS proposal that this be submitted to arbitration was a special agreement between Belize and Guatemala signed at the OAS in Washington in which both territories were agreeing to based subject to national referendum in both countries submit the dispute to in arbitration to the international court of justice as such and it reads the special agreement reads the parties request the court to determine in accordance with applicable rules of international law as specified in article 38 one of the statute of the court any and all legal claims of Guatemala against Belize to land and insular territories and to any maritime area pertaining to these territories, to declare the rights therein of both parties and to determine the boundaries between their respective territories and areas. In other words, this was a one-time shot. Any and all claims by Guatemala were to be resolved here. Once this was once the court gave its, its resulting proposal, it was not simply a proposal, it was something that would be binding, and there was nothing else. No further attempt would be entertained of Guatemala or by Guatemala to any other territory, whether insular or maritime as such. Okay? So it would be the, the final, everything would be wrapped up in this arbitration agreement. Remember this agreement had made it clear that it was subject to referendum by both countries as such. The agreement at that point had said simultaneous referendum. Because of certain differences between Guatemala and Belize, is a, a, a more recent um, uh, agreement was made that said it doesn't need to be simultaneous. Each territory could do it at their convenience as such, as long as one we still hold that the ruling of the ICJ will be final and binding as such on both parties. Right? And interestingly, it also made clear that if any of the two territories were not conforming to this binding resolution, that in fact the ICJ and the OAS would then work at appointing the commissioners to do the demarcation, to finalize the border demarcation between two territories as such. So even if we were not willing to, they would do it for us. They would take over the responsibility as such. And so this approach, this seventh attempt, and this, remember, is our seventh attempt to settle this dispute, is an arbitration attempt. And if it goes through, it would be final and binding. In other words, after that, the Belize-Guatemala territorial dispute would be resolved. There would be no other turning back, no other, another attempt, another proposal as such. Okay? So it is very important that we understand where the Belize Guatemala territorial claim is at after multiple attempts to settle this dispute and resulting all in failures, we are now where the proposal at an arbitration, an international court doing a legal uh, adjudication, one can say, of the dispute is where we are pending referendums as such. Both countries are waiting and are proposing to have their referendums shortly. We don't know exactly when Guatemala will have theirs, and we are waiting to find out when they will have theirs before Belize then goes into <coughs> preparation mode to have our own referendum as such. So until that occurs, we are waiting for information. Remember, this referendum will be asking us, do we want that this Guatemala, Belize-Guatemala territorial dispute be arbitrated, be solved through an international court system as such? 
we can vote yes, we can vote no. Guatemalans will also decide whether to vote yes or whether to vote no. And it's only if both countries vote yes that it moves forward. If any one country votes no, the process dies there. Right? It doesn't go any farther. So this is where we are at, at this point in history, at this point in our time, in our ability to resolve this dispute. Thank you very much.